All right. Hi, you're 11. This is Mr. Lim here. And today we are going to be talking about electron configurations and the quantum mechanical model. Okay, so we're going to be learning about how these electrons are arranged around the nucleus and they're arranged in a very specific way. So let's have a look. Uh, electrons are found uh, in area around the nucleus, okay? These uh, electrons are found in a specific regions, which means that there's like, you know, areas of 3D space around the nucleus, but they are not in defined orbits or stationary positions. What does that mean? That means that they're not stationary around the nucleus. And second of all, that they're not floating, they're not uh, orbiting the nucleus. So it's not as if they're going around in a predefined path, like, you know, planets around the sun. Okay, and I know the animation for the, um, the, the chemistry class is showing a defined orbit around, electrons going around in a defined orbit around the nucleus. That's not scientifically accurate, but it looks cool. And that's uh, the, the picture of the atom that you generally see, even though it's not technically correct. All right. So there are regions of space around the nucleus. And we're going to say lots of these ideas of regions of space. It's just a, a 3D area um, around something. And these things are called energy levels, okay? And so each energy level occupies a region around the nucleus. And then each subsequent energy level, so like the next energy level, occupies a space further away from the nucleus, okay? So imagine these, like, these are like car parking, car park spots, right? So there's car park one, there's car park two, car park three. Car park one is closest to the entrance, car park two is close, uh, further away, car park three is further away even then, all right? Um, sometimes these regions of space that each energy level occupies can overlap other energy levels and that can start to um, create some difficulties later on. But the idea is that these energy levels uh, can overlap, all right? Now, once you have these energy levels, they can be divided into what's known as orbitals, okay? So what are orbitals? They're just uh, regions of space or, um, yeah, regions of space within those regions of spaces. And these orbitals are based, uh, are defined based on their shape, okay? So there are different shaped regions of space. Some of them are spherical, some of them are teardrop shaped, some of them are fancy shaped. Um, the idea is that they've got different shapes, but they can all hold electrons. Okay, so just if we go back to our car park, there are, you know, you might have car parking spaces, which are just the normal, you know, they're all next to each other, and you just front park in, or you might have car park spaces which are parallel parking only, you might have some car park spaces which are uh, on an angle or something. Those would be the different orbitals. Each of them can hold a, a, a car, and but they're just different shapes within the same uh, region, that same car park. Okay, so each energy level can have different types of orbitals, as well as different numbers of orbitals. So it might have two parallel parking spots, as well as four forward parking spots, as well as 10 angled spots. All right, so you have different types and different numbers of those orbitals. The number of orbitals present depend on how many electrons that energy level can hold, All right? So if you think about car parks, actually, if you think about as you, uh, you know, the car park which is closest to the entrance might be quite small because you've got only got a little bit of space around there, All right? But the car park, the region of space out uh, beyond that can be bigger because you've got a little bit more area around that um, that first car park and then that um, the region of space around that car park, the second car park, the third car park is much bigger because you've just got more space. And so it generally, as you go up energy levels, there can be more electrons that can fit. All right. And then each orbital, which is that region of space within the energy levels can hold two electrons. So this little table summarizes most of that. So let's go through it. The idea is that the first energy level has only one orbital, and it's an S-type orbital. That's just its name, all right? Because it only has one S-type orbital, it can only hold two electrons. So it has one S orbital, all right? So I actually might color code these a little bit better. So um, let's do it this way. Uh, there we go. So energy level one, number of orbitals one, 
uh, and the type of orbital present is an S orbital, all right? Um, so we'll have, you can see here, uh, it has one, which is the blue color, S orbital, because it's a that type of orbital, all right? In the next energy level, we can have, there's a, in the next energy level, there are four different orbitals. There are two types, S and P orbitals. Okay? So out of the four, one of them is an S orbital, and the other three are P orbitals. So you end up having one S orbital and three P orbitals, making four orbitals in total. Okay? In the third energy level, we have a map nine orbitals possible. Right? There are S orbitals, P orbitals, and D orbitals. So to get the nine, you can have one S orbital. You can have, you'll have three P orbitals and you'll have five d orbitals, which makes one, three, and five makes nine. Okay, so there's one s orbital, three p orbitals, and five d orbitals, right? And then the last energy, or the next energy level four, and there are like energy levels five, six, and seven, um, has 16 orbitals. They're s, p, d, and f. Okay, and those are all the different types of orbitals. Uh, there are no more further types of orbitals um, that exist. And then there's one S orbital, three P orbitals, five D orbitals, and seven F orbitals to make a total of 16, right? And they are all of different colors here. Okay, so that's the idea, that you can have different types of orbitals, you can have different numbers of orbitals within those energy levels. So let's move on. Each orbital has a classification based on which energy level is it in and what type of orbital it is. So this number, there is one. So these are the, these things here, these things here are those kind of names for those orbitals. Okay. And the numbers there represent specific things. This number here, that's not what I want to, this number here represents the energy level, not the number of orbitals there are. So there is one, one S orbital, okay? And the S orbital was, I think, green, okay? So it's saying that when I say one S, it's saying the energy level one S type orbital. If I say three P, that's the third energy level P orbitals. If I say four S, that's the fourth energy level, S orbital. If I say five, uh, sorry, three D orbital, it's energy level three and D type orbitals. And then you've got to remember how many orbitals there are per type of orbital, okay? So the S orbitals all, always have one, the P orbitals always have three, the D orbitals always have five, and the F orbitals always have seven, okay? So the number in front does not represent how many of them there are, but the energy level associated with the orbitals. Okay, so that's going back to that. Okay, this energy level is uh, the thing that is shown when you write 1s or 3p or whatever, not how many there are. Okay, what you have to do is you have to memorize that there's always one S orbital, 3P orbitals, 5D orbitals, and 7F orbitals, right? Um, there are no, but not all of them have like F orbitals because F orbitals only exist uh, once you get to the fourth energy level because there's just not enough space. Remember when you get to the further away car parks, you have more space to have more different things. So they have more different types of orbitals in those spaces, all right? So, that's a bit of confusing. Uh, how do we even do this? Let's have a look. The electrons fill the closest energy level, the closest energy levels and orbitals to the nucleus, all right? So effectively, they're just filling in from as close to the nucleus as possible, just like you would go to the car park and you'd go as close to the entrance as possible. 
and then um, you'd feel further back. Okay, so we show the location of those electrons by showing which orbitals are filled. So if there are five electrons, we got to find homes for five electrons. So first of all, in the first energy level, S orbital, we can fit two. So therefore, we write 1s2. Okay, 1 being the energy level, s being the type of orbital, and 2 electrons can fit in there. Then in the second energy level, the s orbital can also fit 2, so 2s2. And then because we've only got 5 electrons, in the second energy level, in the p orbital, there's only going to be 1 electron because we've only got 1 electron left. All right, let's say we had an element like alu like aluminium which has 13 electrons. So let's have a look at, oh, well, we'll be, let's see how to do that in just a moment. All right, that's how you would show, so you actually write this one as 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. All right, and so the number of electrons, whoops, that's not what I wanted. Uh, the number of electrons would be shown here, 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 and so there's a total of five electrons. Okay, so overlapping energy levels is where we have the fun stuff. The fun starts because the energy levels overlap, right? So the energy levels overlap. Not all of the orbitals in the third energy level are closer than the orbitals in the fourth energy level. So there are some really far away orbitals in the third energy levels, and there are some close fourth energy levels um, orbitals. So the following diagram over here shows how we would fill uh, electron orbitals in order of their proximity to the nucleus. So you read it like this, you go that way, and then you go that way, and then you go that way, and then you go that way, and that way, and that way and that way, and that way, and that way, okay? And so the idea is what this one is saying is that here, it says to fill the 3p orbital and then the 4s orbital before you go to the 3d orbital. So what that's saying is that this is, oh, not that, don't want that, that this one is far away and this one is close, Right, so the 4s2 is closer than the 3d10, so therefore you have to fill that one first. All right, so let's try aluminium, which has 13 electrons. So this diagram here shows you that it's 1s2 is the first thing that's filled in. First energy level, s orbital, two electrons. Then we go down this way and we go to the 2s2. So 2s2, second energy level, s orbitals, two electrons. Then we go down that way, and then we get back to here. 2p6. 2p6, second energy level, p orbitals, 6 electrons. And we're up to uh, 10 electrons in total. So we've got 3 left. Then we go to the 3s2. Third energy level, s orbital, 2 electrons. And then finally, we've only got 1 uh, electron left, and we go end up at the 3p... And because there's only one electron left, it's just 3p1. And that's how you would write the electron configuration of aluminium. Okay, I'll do two more. I won't, I'll make just walk it through and then you can have a go at it yourself at another date. Okay, so let's just do um, oxygen with eight electrons. Okay, it'd be 1s2, 2s2, 2p4, because there's only, uh, we only need eight electrons, okay? And that makes two, oh, not that. Hello, Mr. Lim, learn how to highlight. Right, two, two, and four make eight, All right? So we're going to be practicing this lots in class, so you can watch that there, okay? So, the orbital or model of the electron configuration explains the, oops, I don't want that the shape of the periodic table, okay? Because what they've done is that they've split it up into their orbitals, all right? The shape of the upper half of the periodic table and the lanthanides and actinides can be explained by the orbital model, showing that when you are to fill in them, you go 1s, 
1s, 2s, and there's only two of them, 2p, which there are six of them, which happen to be six, one, two, three, four, five, six uh, elements there, 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d, and there are 10 uh, elements there, corresponding for one increase in electron each time, then 4p, then 5s, and so on and so forth. Okay, so if you actually try and memorize the shape of this roughly, you can actually find out the electron configuration of something quite quickly. All right, so for example, if I was to do copper with 29 electrons, I could try and use that diagram or I could use the periodic table. Copper uh, sits here on the periodic table. You have to find it um, and then know, or at least just find it and then work. remember what the things are. So you say, okay, well, it's going to have the 1s2 because it's already there. Then we go 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, and then 3d, and you get to 9, 3d9. Okay, so using the periodic table, you can actually get these uh, orbital electron configurations quite fast. Right? In some questions, you'll be asked to give the electron configuration in the Bohr model, which only, which means only showing the number of electrons in each energy level, right? So what does that mean? If I was to take aluminium with 13 electrons, right? I know that the electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, uh, 3p1, okay? That means that you take the Oops, I don't want that. Learn to highlight Mr. Lim. You take the orbital electron configuration and then add all the electrons in each energy level and then write them from first to seventh energy levels. So you would say, okay, well, how many electrons are in the first energy level? Well, there are two. How many electrons are there in the second energy level? Well, there is two here and two here. That makes eight in total. And then there is two here and one there, that makes three. So that be how you would convert the aluminium to the Bohr um, model, as a, or the orbital model to the Bohr model, All right? Let's do, say, calcium with 20 electrons, okay? And you would say 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2. Okay, and this hopefully shows you why calcium and potassium start filling up the fourth energy level before the th third energy level fills. Okay, so two, then eight, then eight again, then two. Okay, so two, eight, eight, two. So that's how you would show these ones in the Bohr model configuration. All right, sorry for such a long video, but it's a, a lot to take in. You'll be practicing this lots. Adios.